Hello to everyone who's joined um, so far. My name is Kirsty Meddings and I'm a product manager here at Crossmark. I'll be kicking us off in just a few minutes, but by my watch, we've still got a couple of minutes until the hour. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to mute myself and wait for the rest of the attendees to arrive. Okay, hello. Well, I make it um, just gone the hour, so I guess we'll get started. Um, if you've just joined, my name's Kirsty Meddings. I'm a product manager here at Crossref, and today's webinar session is about our Crossmark service. Um, this is going to be a fairly brief session. We try to keep it to about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I've got about 10, 15 minutes worth of slides that I'll run through, um, and then we'll have plenty of time for questions. So we've got everybody on mute just at the moment so that there's no... Um, interference from anybody's speakers, but if you have questions as we go along, please feel free to type them into the question box, um, and I'll pick those up at the end, and then also at the end we can use the raise hand feature of GoToWebinar if anyone wants to ask a question <coughs> over the microphone. So as I said, an overview of Crossmark, I'm just going to explain today what Crossmark is, um, what's new with the service, and why you should participate in Crossmark if you're not already doing so. So Crossmark is these things. It's a button um, on your websites and PDFs and a pop-up box and a set of met metadata that all go together to tell the reader if there have been any updates to the piece of content that they're looking at. So that's its main purpose, is to give um, the status of a piece of content that a reader has um, in front of them, whether it's been updated, retracted, so on. But it can also give them a lot of other information. Um, it can show funding information, authors' orchids with links, um, the publication history, any rights or licensing information, and a whole load of other things. And I'll talk through examples of all of these as I go along today. So let's start with the key purpose of Crossmark, and that's to let the reader know if there are any changes to the status of a particular publication. And we know that lots of things can happen to content after it's been published. Um, it can be corrected, it can be updated, it can even be retracted or withdrawn. Sometimes these things happen quite soon after publication, sometimes they happen months, even years later. So one of the main purposes of Crossmark is to ensure that there's a consistent and reliable way for readers to be notified when these important changes happen. <clears throat> this is particularly important when we're talking about PDF copies of articles. So you've got readers out there who are downloading PDFs to their local libraries, keeping them on their machines or tablets, um, and when they go back to reference them at any given time in the future, they've got no way of knowing if something has changed about this piece of content unless you took the time to go and return to the page that you downloaded it from, which seems a little bit unlikely. 
But with Crossmark, um, the publisher adds a Crossmark button to the PDF itself. In this particular article, it's up in the top left there. Um, and then the reader can click on it, and providing that they have an internet connection, which most people do most of the time, a web page will pop up with a Crossmark box here that gives you the latest status of piece of content. And this is what most people see most of the time, just a confirmation that the document is up to date. It gives a link back, the Crossref DOI link, that will always point back to um, the original version of record on the publisher's site, and also a link out to this particular publisher's policies on things such as corrections and retractions. So no updates at this point. Um, the box does also point out that any future updates will be listed below, so it's kind of a reminder to the reader to check back when they see the cross mark button um, to make sure that nothing's changed. And what this box is doing is checking the Crossref database in real time <clears throat> and looking for the latest status. So even if this article is several years old, if a publisher has registered with us that there is a correction to this, it'll go and check in real time and it will know that an update has been applied since publication and it will flag it to the reader. It works the same way on a web page. Here you've got the cross mark button in the top right. Clicking on that, the cross mark box appears again. Um, in this example, we see that there's been an update that has been issued for this document. And here it says there's an update, it's a corrigendum, um, and it gives you a link to that correction. You'll see that the box has changed color to alert the reader to the fact that there is a change. And then all I need to do is click on this where it says click to view corrigendum and it'll take me through to the correction notice. Um, oh, I think I've skipped a slide. It will take me through to the correction notice on the publisher's site. This is another example, um, this time a crystallography journal. Cross mark button over here on the right, clicking on that. And this time, this particular article has been retracted. The box turns red to highlight the most serious um, updates, if you like, of, correction, of retraction and withdrawal. And again, in the red box at the top, there's a link through to the retraction notice that will explain um, why this article has been retracted. So just to pause and put some definition around what we mean by an update, as this is something that we get asked quite regularly. To trigger a crossmark status update in that box there, the changes to the content must be significant enough to affect the crediting or interpretation of the work. And within scholarly publishing, there are a limited set of events that meet this criteria. Um, and we've defined that list as follows. We worked with a group, advisory group of publishers on this list and uh, came to the conclusion that these 12 status update date types are the ones that can be used to trigger an update in Crossmark. So it's very much not minor changes, any changes to correct typos, um, slight things that don't actually change the meaning of the work that the reader's reading should not trigger a this content has been updated warning through Crossmark. These are the ones that we feel um, are important because they will affect either how the reader interprets the content or whether it's credited differently. So the minor updates, um, perhaps going from a version of record from an accepted manuscript, so the formatting's a little bit different. Again, if it hasn't changed the meaning, um, that shouldn't trigger an update. There is a place within the Crossmark box that I'll show you shortly where you can put this kind of information. Um, so things that might be of interest to the reader but don't necessarily warrant them knowing that something significant has changed. So together with the status at the top of the Crossmark box there, there's the opportunity for a publisher to show um, a whole wealth of additional metadata within the Crossmark box. So you'll see these sections underneath the top heading there, authors, funding, license information, and more information. And if um, you are depositing any of these um, metadata fields, registering any of these with Crossref, we'll automatically pull them in so that they display to the reader in this box. So the authors section here, um, this particular publisher has registered an ORCID for one of their one of the authors of this paper, and we've included that in this box with a link through to the orchids, to the author's ORCID profile, excuse me. Similarly, if you're depositing funding data, that will automatically appear in the Crossmark box here, um, as will any links to any licenses that you may have deposited. So if you're participating in Crossmark and you're registering that metadata with Crossref, um, that will all auto-populate, so you're automatically putting that information right in front of the reader there. 
<clears throat> we have a new section um, in the Crossmark box as of about 18 months ago, um, and this is where if you are able to register clinical trial numbers as part of your cross cross-ref metadata, any trials that are mentioned in a paper that the paper is referencing, we will tie them together with other papers that reference the same clinical trial number to create kind of a thread of publications, if you like. So to show you how it works, when you expand the clinical trial section of the box, you get a list of trials that are discussed in this paper. In this example, it's this particular one starting NCT, which is registered at clinicaltrials.gov, which is the US government trial registry. And when you click on that um, particular trial, it pulls back a list of all of the other articles that Crossref knows about that also reference that same clinical trial. So this is a really useful resource for the reader who can then start to navigate between um, those different articles that are all discussing the same clinical trial. So this is a screenshot from the Crossmark box on the BMJ journal Heart. If I take the top link of the clinical trial here and click on it, I jump through to an article on The Lancet discussing the same clinical trial, then there's a cross mark box here, and again that takes me back round. So it kind of links everything together. Um, so if you're publishing in this area and you think you'd like to get involved in registering clinical trials and joining in with this, which is still relatively new and only really just out of beta, um, then please do drop us a line. And then for any other information that doesn't fit into these standard categories, we have a section of the box which is headed more information and this can pretty much take any additional metadata that you want to show. Um, so <clears throat> it's basically a free text field for you, you can format it as you like, you can order it as you like. This particular publisher has included the content type, they've shown the publication history, the dates it was received, accepted and published, they've linked through to some supplementary materials and included a copyright statement and a license. So this is where you can put um, information about minor updates, perhaps that are covered by the publication history, anything that you think is relevant to the readers of your particular publication. So this is very, very flexible in terms of what additional metadata you display. <clears throat> it's an important part of Crossmark that all of the metadata um, that is registered with Crossref is also fully um, openly available in machine readable format through our various APIs. This is a not very attractive screenshot of um, results from our REST API. So our APIs are open, anyone can access them and query for any of the metadata. And this means that there are some interesting opportunities for propagating this metadata. Um, this is a mock-up, but um, we'd like to see, as Crossmark gathers momentum, more third parties using the API to query for things like corrections and retractions. So this mocked-up example shows um, <coughs> a, um, a reference list on a publisher's website, and they could conceivably be using the Crossref API to check each of those references they're displaying and to flag if there's been any changes to those references. And by putting the Crossmark button on PDFs, you can ensure that wherever those PDFs go, the status updates will follow, and there will always be a link back to the definitive copy on the publisher's website. So P PDFs that get shared in various different sites, um, that Crossmark button is always there. Clicking on that Crossmark button will always come back and check the Crossref database and let the reader know if there have been any updates to that content. So the webinar today isn't going into the detail about the steps you need to take to participate in Crossmark, um, but I will just touch on the sort of best practices. We run another webinar that goes in more detail into the actual um, deposits you need to make and the, the things that you need to do technically to get set up. So anyone can join um, or participate in Crossmark. We do ask that you deposit comprehensive metadata so that that Crossmark box is well populated. So while funding data and ORCID are not required of any of our publishers, we really strongly encourage you to deposit these metadata so that that information is in the box there for readers to see. Then you need to display the Crossmark button next to the article title on your HTML pages and in your PDFs. And of course, you need to commit to letting us know about any updates whenever any of your content changes. There are some additional fees for Crossmark. For current content, it's 20 cents per deposit, and that's everything published in the past two years, and for back file contents, it's two cents um, per deposit. 
If you've already um, been running Crossmark, um, hopefully you've already upgraded. About this time last year, we um, launched Crossmark version 2.0. Um, we redesigned things a little bit. It was started to look a little bit old-fashioned. Um, we made it mobile friendly, so the Crossmark box now works well on mobile phones and tablets. <coughs> we updated the code. Um, some of the JavaScript in our old code was interfering with people's websites. Um, and we sent a lot of information out about out about upgrading, so if you should be already participating in Crossmark and you're not running version 2.0, please do take a look um, and upgrade because we're no longer supporting versions 1.5 and earlier. It's very simple and this is actually really what you need to do um, <clears throat> even if you're starting afresh. We have a snippet of code that we supply to you that you put in your landing pages. Um, behind the Crossmark button, and you can choose the shape and size of that button, which is delivered from our content delivery network. Again, if you're not already participating in Crossmark, don't worry about this bit now. Um, there's plenty more detail available about how to get started from scratch. So just some numbers. We've got 5.4 million DOIs that contain Crossmark deposits, and those come from 490 of our publisher members. Within those five and a half million um, DOIs, 57,000 have some kind of status update. Um, the vast majority, as you can see, are corrections, um, but we have nearly 2,000 retractions registered um, with Crossref now. And well over half, 3.1 million of those DOIs have got some form of additional metadata that populates that um, more information box. So pretty much bang on time at 15 minutes. That brings me to the end of my brief introduction to the Crossmark service, but I am very happy to take some questions. As I say, you can either type them into the box, which I see some are there already, or if you're feeling brave, you can virtually raise your, raise your hand, and I'll see if I can unmute you to, <clears throat> to answer the question. So let me just take some of the questions that have come in already to the questions tab. Um, someone's asked who adds the correction notes, is it only the publisher? Yes, we would only expect the publisher of the content to issue a correction um, for that content. Obviously the information may come to light from researchers, authors, others, but <clears throat> if you've published the content, the correction should be issued by the publisher. Uh, the next question I may not have entirely understood, but why would you need to alert about a new editor and what for? Um, I don't think an editor would necessarily um, need to be mentioned when we talked about the crediting of the work. A situation such as um, <clears throat> an author had been left off that should have been added um, so that you, you, the reader needs to know exactly who wrote the content that they're reading or if there was an authors that have been put in by accident that should be removed from that. We believe that's significant enough to trigger a status update um, because obviously it's important that people know who authored the content that they're reading, but editors I don't, I don't think would be important enough to do that. And another question um, from the same person, I hope I'm interpreting your questions correctly. Do you need to update all past publications if you decide to participate? No, not at all. We'd love you to. Um, if you um, participate in Crossmark, we ask you to do all of your current content. If you um, would like to go back and do your backfile, that's fantastic, but it's certainly not a requirement. <clears throat> There's a question about, can you talk about the production of metadata? As I said, I would rather not go into that today. Um, it's a little bit detailed. The URL on the screen right here gives lots of information about it. And in November, um, I think around the 21st, we'll be running a how-to webinar for Crossmark where I'll go into a lot of detail about the metadata that you need to produce in order to make Crossmark work. So apologies for skipping over that question, but <clears throat> that would be another 20-minute webinar. And I don't want to hold you all for that long. There's a question about whether Crossmark updates things automatically. No, you need to let us know. If there's a correction, you need to send that to us as part of your metadata. At that point, 
we will make the crossmark box work automatically, but it's up to the publisher to notify Crossref when a correction or a retraction is issued. Then we'll tie that metadata together and make the crossmark box work, but we don't <coughs> apply any updates. That's very much down to the publisher. Are there any more questions? There are a couple here that I think I might pick up offline. Um, I've got your contact details, but any others that people would like to ask while we're still? Oh, I have a raised hand. Oh, no, it's gone. Ah, that's a, that's a great question, which I think probably Edelson tied in with your previous question. If you're a very small publisher, um, can you run Crossmark through the web deposit form? <clears throat> At the moment, you can't. We are about to release a new version of our web deposit form, which we're calling Metadata Manager. I'm not entirely sure of the timescales, but it's in testing at the moment, so it's fairly soon. Um, and when Metadata Manager replaces the web deposit form, <clears throat> you will be able to um, to upload Crossmark metadata through that. I think you can do it through the web deposit form at the moment, but it's a little bit convoluted. So I think my recommendation would be to wait for the replacement, which I believe is weeks, if not just a couple of months away with Metadata Manager. Um, and then small publishers using that, that route to deposit will be able to participate. Next question. Um, in many cases, we're publishing the corrections with a new DOI and Will you combine the, DO, the DOIs yourself? Absolutely, and that's a really good point because um, the best practice that we recommend is that when you issue a correction, you publish that as a correction notice, assign it its own separate DOI, and then when you deposit that DOI to Crossref, you also reference the DOI that's updating, and then we make that link in our database. So absolutely, that's, that's the correct way to do it. I have a question about how to create DOIs for each paper, um, which I'm not going to cover right now. I will follow up with the questioner on that separately, um, because again, that, that's probably, I can point you at another webinar that will help you with that in more detail than I've got time to cover here. Is there anyone else still typing? We still have a few minutes left if there are more questions. Just to point out again, that's my email address up on the screen. Please do feel free to drop me an email if you think of um, questions after the session. We will be circulating the slides, and if the technology has worked, we've recorded the session as well, and we'll send you around a link to, to the recording so that you can share that with your colleagues. Okay. Well, I think I don't see any further questions coming in. Um, so just remains to say thank you very much for your time today. Please drop me a line if I can answer any questions or help you with anything at all relating to Crossmark, and take a look at the URL there on our website um, for more information. Thank you.